Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Let's talk a little bit about mulch and its benefits, especially with regards to weeds. If you've been into gardening for any amount of time, you've probably heard that mulch is wonderful stuff, that bare soil is inviting disaster. Uh, bare soil is um, generally not good for a garden, but some gardeners do have bare soil. Well, what do you do to keep weeds down? How do you keep your soil from blowing away? Um, that's what mulch is for. I want to show you the difference between uh, the two styles of gardening and how to manage a bare soil garden and the benefits of using mulch. I prefer mulch, but I don't always, I don't always have enough or I don't always get, to get around to putting it on. So uh, let's take a look. In this bed, I've mulched heavily. I've mulched with cardboard on top of which I put bark mulch and the bark mulch is there for holding the cardboard down but also for making it look nice. And you can see there are almost no weeds except where a few of these uh, nut sedge have found their way through a crack and they'll do that and I just snapped that one off but yeah hardly any weeds at all it's a very beautiful look to the garden and yeah no weeds. So here's the deal mulch has several benefits. Mulch is good for keeping the weeds down, but also insulating the soil and for helping to retain moisture. We have had a drought here, and so all the water that goes into this garden from my irrigation, I want it to stay there and not just evaporate away. And well, we got some rain the other night, finally, and I can tell if I dig down in here, I can feel the moisture. You can see that it's a little bit wet here. So mulch, excellent idea. Over here, let's harvest some of these cayennes. Look at that. This will keep me in cayenne powder all year. Red Flame Cayenne from Johnny Seeds, my favorite one. There is a recommendation for you if you want some cayenne peppers. Here we have a weedy garden. I had my squash plants, a couple of them right here. I've since taken them out. They're done. But look what's left behind. All this grew up under that squash. And I've got wild amaranth in my garden. I've got nut sedge. I've got all kinds of grassy weeds here. And if you don't stay on top of weeding a garden like this, it'll take over really quickly. And I've got some morning glory, also called bindweed. I hate this stuff. I think that's what it's called. But all this has grown up in this garden because there's nothing to suppress it. Uh, the soil is still nice and rich. Since it rained recently, it's nice and moist. Very good garden soil, but these weeds, they get out of control, they'll take over your garden, they'll rob resources from your plants. I grabbed the ones I don't want sticking around these things, these morning glories, they get everywhere. But there we go, we got a weedy garden because I didn't mulch it, and I did this on purpose so I could show the difference. But how do you take care, if you, if you can't afford mulch, you can't find mulch, or, um, you know, you just, you just don't use mulch. How do you take care of a garden like this? Let me show you some tricks that you can use for weeding a garden like this. This is a stirrup hoe, also called a scuffle hoe. I've shown you this before in videos, but I want to talk specifically about why I love this tool for gardening when you don't use mulch. Let me show you. Even though I've got some big weeds in here, I can drag this stirrup hoe just under the surface cut those weeds off at the root and it's real easy to do just come through and cut them off if you're having a hard time cutting what you want to do is come and sharpen your blade with a file now all these weeds you can pull them out of your garden and shake the dirt off if you want to bigger ones i'm going to do that just leave them on the surface to dry in the sun. The beauty of this is you can work around your plants just like you could with a traditional hoe. And this cuts down the weeds pretty efficiently. Even big ones like this guy here. Just come in, chop that guy down. If you've got super big roots down there, the scuffle hoe will help to pull them out. Got some Bermuda grass in here we don't want. All this stuff cleans up the garden really nicely. And within minutes, you're back to something that looks a little more respectable from a 
gardener's perspective. So I like this scuffle hoe. You can push it, you can pull it, you can work around your plants, get all these weeds out. So yeah, there we go. If you're not going to use mulch, you've got to stay on top of your weeds. And this is a good way to do it. Another way to get on top of your weeds, if you've got a bare bit of garden and you're not going to plant it, if you're letting it rest for a while, is put a tarp over it. You put a tarp over that soil and it will solarize the soil and the weeds won't grow. All right, so there we go, that's good enough. I can come in here and plant here. That's really nice soil. These weeds will dry out and add organic material to the soil. Get that. You can see right here where my mulch layer stops. I ran out of cardboard and uh, had to get some beans planted and I haven't, I haven't done any uh, mulching over there. But, never fear, stir up hoe is here and I can knock these weeds down. Now those nut sedge, those are going to keep popping back because they grow from a network underground and uh, you're not going to get them all, but you knock them down, they say about a dozen times and they'll stop coming back. You'll deplete their little resource reserves down in the nut down there. So whenever you're going up close to your plants though, don't go as deep or you uh, will affect their roots as well situation like this where I've got a bean growing right here and some weeds right next to it you got to pull those by hand you can't use your stirrup hoe that close that's what I mean about going shallow around the base of your plants you don't want to damage your plants root system just pull those weeds up gently how you doing Phoebe what's up huh it's a little warm today huh let's go inside come on Mulch can be as simple as a layer of leaves. You can see this layer of leaves is mostly broken down and is returning to the soil in the form of an amendment. That's another benefit of mulch. It breaks down and amends your soil. So, yeah, these garlics, they're looking kind of, they were shaded out by the giant dill plant that I had here. So they're not going to really bulb up, I don't know. We'll see. These over here, looking like they're almost about time to pull up. There are no, uh, no big bulbs down there yet garlic still growing but mulching garlic that's a good idea you can see there are very few weeds in this bed right here looking good think about weeds weeds like this right here weeds are any plant that you did not you don't want in this area look at this guy he thinks I can't see him that's a leaf-footed bug, and they're not good for the garden. But uh, this came up volunteer. Some of you have identified it or tried to. I don't remember what you said, but that's a weed. Here's the deal. Sometimes it's beneficial to have weeds. Weeds offer, like in, in these uh, holes here, for example, weeds offer a place for beneficial insects to hide, to live. And uh, as you saw there, sometimes no, not beneficial insects will uh, hang around your weeds too. I'd rather have them hanging around my weeds than my tomato plants. So sometimes it's okay to let some of this weedy growth hang out in your garden. It's not bad. It doesn't mean you're a bad gardener. A situation like this, where you have a well-established perennial like this grapevine, this muscadine, those weeds can now live there. That plant is well-established. Its roots go way out under the lawn here, and I don't have to worry about that. In fact, I'm going to, one of these days, take these bricks away. Those were there with mulch in it so that I could get my plant established. Now that my perennial is established and producing for me, I don't really have to worry so much about mulching at the base. Although, it can be beneficial, but these muscanines can take that. They're very hardy. I don't know if you can see this. This is what you don't want to see in the garden. If you don't want this plant to grow here, and you see that it's put on seeds or a seed head like that those are the things you want to get out never let your weeds go to seed this is nut sedge and it propagates by seed just as well as it does by roots underground but these grasses right here I don't like them creeping into my garden there's some nut sedge that's way down there 
But uh, yeah, you can see it's only been an hour since I cut these down and they're already starting to dry out on the surface here. And they will become one with the garden. Add a little of the nutrition back into it that they robbed. So you don't have to use mulch, although it is a good idea. You can garden, and people have been doing this for centuries with bare soil. You just have to weed it occasionally. I have some sprawling tomatoes back here. And part of the problem with sprawling tomatoes is they cover up the weeds that are coming up beneath them and you can't see them to get them out. So I can't tell right here the difference between the weeds growing in my blocks and the grasses and weeds growing in the midst of my sprawling tomatoes. But here's, here's a weed. Technically that's not a weed, that is a sweet potato. And it's coming up where I grew them last year voluntarily and I'm just going to leave it there. This guy right here, yeah that's coming out. But, look at that, down in the midst of the weeds, the plants grow just fine. Weeds don't really rob as much nutrition from your soil and plants and compete with your plants as uh, some gardeners might tell you. Yes, they're competing, but you can see that my sprawling tomatoes that didn't get pruned up and didn't get put on a, on a trellis, they're producing very heavily for me, despite the weeds. There's a little bit about weeds, mulch, bare soil, and why you don't have to fret too much over it uh, unless you just like a real tidy looking garden. Sometimes uh, when it starts to get mid-spring, early summer, especially middle summer, it's hard to get out and weed that garden. Um, sometimes I just don't worry too much about it. To be frankly honest with you, um, in the summertime my gardens will generally be a weedy mess. But I'll still get harvest from it because like I said, those weeds don't compete as much as we really think they do. Um, they can survive, um, your plants can survive with a few weeds in your garden. Uh, like I also said, weeds have a beneficial aspect of housing insects that you might want in your garden or being more of a trap crop for the insects you don't want in your garden. If you notice a weed growing in your garden that's getting really eaten up, just leave it there. And uh, whatever's eating that up won't bother your plants as much. So, hey, thanks for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Just a short video to show you what's going on and some results of experimenting with mulch and bare soil. You have happy gardening. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>